Hello Liftoff fans, we're back with another video about Great Space. This year marks the 45th anniversary of the Voyager launch. Of course, anniversaries like these have no meaning for spacecraft that have left Earth's orbit. But they do for us, who have remained here on this planet waiting and counting the days. Incredibly, it's possible that these spacecraft, which have literally changed the face of the solar system, could last until the next big anniversary, the 50th anniversary in 2027. We're really on the edge here, although some say that turning off instruments and saving onboard power will even get us to 2030. In the 18th and 19th centuries, the Grand Tour was defined as the journey of education through Europe made by the scions of the wealthy class, almost always with the final destination being Italy. In March 1977, just a few months before the launch, NASA held a competition to rename the project that from then on would be called Voyager Program. Voyager 2 was launched first, on August 20th, 1977. It was followed up on September 5th, 1977 by Voyager 1, which was put on a faster, shorter trajectory straight to Jupiter. Voyager 1's course was optimized for the Titan flyby and Voyager 2 for the Grand Tour. Both launches took place from Cape Canaveral. The probes reached Jupiter in 1979, with a separation of four months, Voyager 1 on March 5th and Voyager 2 on July 9th. Even after centuries of telescopic observations, there were many surprises. The Great Red Spot was revealed to be huge anticyclone, large enough to swallow the entirety of Earth, with eddies and smaller storms around its periphery. Voyager 1 also discovered a very faint ring system around Jupiter, made of dust ejected from the inner moons after high-velocity impacts. The rings are far less dramatic than Saturn's, but are equally interesting scientifically. The main ring circles from 125,000 kilometers away from the center of the planet. Voyager 1 discovered two new moons of Jupiter, Thebe and Metis. Both are irregular in shape. Thebe is 116 kilometers in its largest dimension, and Metis is only 60 kilometers long. However, the real excitement came from Io, Jupiter's closest moon, and the fourth largest moon in the solar system. Images captured by the two high-resolution cameras revealed to scientists a relatively young surface world, dotted with oddly shaped pits, mountains taller than Mount Everest, and volcanic lava flows. During its flyby in November 1980, Voyager 1 found five new moons, a ring system consisting of thousands of bands, wedge-shaped transient clouds of tiny particles in the B-ring that scientists called spokes, a new ring, the G-ring, and shepherding satellites on either side of the F-ring, satellites that keep the rings well-defined. Based on incoming data, all the moons appeared to be composed largely of water and ice. The main goal, however, was to explore Titan, Saturn's largest moon. The reason for so much interest was its dense atmosphere, which was found to be composed mainly of nitrogen, like the Earth's, and dotted with clouds of methane and ethane. The data collected during the overflight were of the fundamental importance because they led to the formulation of the hypothesis about the possible presence of hydrocarbon lakes on the surface. Following the encounter with Saturn, Voyager 1 headed on a trajectory to escape the solar system at a speed of about 500 million kilometers per year. So long, Voyager 1. Thank you for all. Okay, but what happened to Voyager 2 in the meantime? Voyager 2's closest encounter to Jupiter was on July 9, 1979, at a range of about 650,000 kilometers. It transmitted new data on the planet's clouds. Its newly discovered four moons and ring system as well as 17,000 new pictures. During its encounter, it relayed back spectacular photos of the entire Jovian system, including its moons Callisto at a range of about 215,000 kilometers, Ganymede at 62,000 kilometers, Europa at 200,000 kilometers, Io and Amalthea, all of which had already been surveyed by Voyager 1. With the combined cameras of the two Voyagers, at least 80% of the surfaces of Ganymede and Callisto were mapped out to a resolution of only 5 kilometers. And then, after a course correction that occurred two hours after its maximum approach to Jupiter, Voyager 2 headed towards Saturn. The closest encounter to Saturn was on August 26, at a range of about 100,000 kilometers. 
the spacecraft provided more detailed images of the ring spokes and kinks, and also the F-ring and its shepherding moons, all found by Voyager 1. Voyager 2's data suggested that Saturn's A-ring was perhaps only about 300 meters thick. Although Voyager 2 had fulfilled its primary mission goals with two planetary encounters, mission planners directed the veteran spacecraft to Uranus, a journey that would take about four and a half years. The closest approach to Uranus took place on January 24, 1986, at a range of about 80,000 kilometers. During its flyby, Voyager 2 discovered 10 little moons, two new rings, in addition to the older nine rings, and a magnetic field that tilted at 55 degrees off-axis and off-center. The spacecraft found wind speeds in Uranus' atmosphere as high as 700 km per hour, and found evidence of a boiling ocean of water some 800 km below the top cloud surface. Its rings were found to be extremely variable in thickness and opacity. Following the Uranus encounter, Voyager 2's encounter with Neptune capped a 7 billion km journey. When on August 25, 1989, it flew about 4,700 kilometers over the cloud tops of the giant planet, the closest of its four flybys. During the encounter, the spacecraft discovered six little moons and four new rings. Because Neptune received so little sunlight, many scientists had expected to see a placid, featureless planet. Instead, Voyager showed a dynamic atmosphere with an 1,100 km per hour winds blowing westward opposite the direction of rotation, at speeds faster than the winds of any other planet. Neptune revealed its great dark spot, a storm system that resembled Jupiter's great red spot, and a smaller eastwardly moving cloud called Scooter, which went around the planet about every 16 hours. The planet was circled by diffuse, dusty rings, and six new moons were discovered. Hydrogen was also found to be the most common atmospheric element although the abundant methane gave the planet its blue appearance. Voyager 2 passed over the North Polar region, using the planet's gravity to redirect the trajectory for a final encounter with Neptune's largest moon, Triton, which turned out to be one of the most interesting moons in the solar system. It is in fact the coldest body among those in orbit around the Sun, with a surface temperature of negative 235 degrees centigrade. New discoveries continue to be made, and surely this engineering masterpiece will continue to inspire future missions throughout the solar system. Way to go, Voyagers. We look forward to seeing your 50th anniversary. Tell us your thoughts about the content in the comment section down below. Also, subscribe and turn on notifications so that you're updated anytime we post a new video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.